Before I talk to you about how to use Corel Draw and do color separations and basic design building in Corel Draw, let me talk to you about some terminology first. You'll be talking to screeners and they'll say, well, I used a, a 230, which would be the mesh count, on a 25 Newton screens. That's how tight the screens were. And I did an index color separation, which is little tiny square pixels. And you're lost. You're going, what are these guys talking about? Let's cover some terminology quickly. Your basic jobs are going to be what's called spot color. Spot color is where you print, in this case, gold and white. And you don't print any other colors besides just these two colors. And so most of your bread and butter printing is going to be called spot color. And again, spot color is, in this case, it's kind of a cream color, and there's a blue on this, and it's just very specific colors of ink. Now, it's, it's kind of easy to go, well, I don't want to do that kind of stuff, but you know what, this is going to be your bread and butter printing. When somebody comes in and say, says, I want a one color print on a shirt, and if you say, well, Jay, I can do the same thing in six colors, but it's going to mean six screens, it's going to be a lot more money, but it'll look really cool, you're going to find the customer's going, no, nah, really, I'm going to move on and go elsewhere, because the customer came in and said they wanted a one color print, and I have an attitude, by the way, you ought to give them what they want, and as long as you gave them what they want, they were happy with the outcome, and you made money, that's really about all you should care about, frankly, and so your bread and butter is going to be spot color. Now, as time goes on, customers are going to come in and say they want photorealistic images on light shirts. Photorealistic images are typically called process color. This is actually four colors of ink, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, commonly called CMYK. And you're going to learn that, that process color is a little harder to print. It's all tiny dots called halftone dots, requires a little bit better press setup, burning a better screen. And process color, by the way, is not the focus of this DVD. This DVD is going to pretty much stick with basic spot color to get you going. And then as you get better, you can do process color. By the way, process color is not hard because once you can make one screen, you can make four screens. Once you can print one print, you can print four prints. But it's doing the color separations that are difficult. This job actually came and was color separated by our program called Fast Films. Now, as time goes on and you want to do uh, uh, work on dark shirts, dark shirts are typically called simulated process color. Looks like CMYK, smells like CMYK, but it's not CMYK. This is actually a six color print. And this is harder, and this again is not the scope of this, of this DVD, but I just want to show it to you so when somebody says I did a great simulated process color job, you know it's probably a black shirt, it was probably a photorealistic print, and it was all halftone dots. Another type of separation that's commonly used is called index color. Indexing is little tiny square dots. And again, indexing is not going to be covered in this, in this session, but I want to give you the terms. We're going to pretty much be covering how to do basic spot color designs with color gradations with halftone dots in this DVD. Okay, the first step in the process, other than getting a customer, which as you'll discover is sometimes the hardest part of the process, and sometimes when you have uh, fussy customers, you'll wish you didn't have those customers, but the first step is to get a customer. The customer then has expectations of what you can do. He thinks it's just going to give you a piece of junky art and you're going you're to perform miracles with it. He's going to give you a napkin with a sketch on it. He's going to give you his child's drawing from school. He's going to give you a, uh, a word file that has a graphic in it. He's going to give you all kinds of things you can't work with, but he's going to figure you can work with it because you're a pro. And we're going to talk right now about how to take customer supplied art, we'll use that pretty loosely, and convert it into something that we can burn a screen from. And if you recall from the section we just covered on the actual process, we need somehow to get the artwork from customers mind our customer's napkin sketch onto either a piece of clear film or onto a piece of paper that's more translucent that we can use to expose the screen from. That's kind of where we're heading right now is how to go from their idea to this. And this is going to be the hardest part of the process and for many of you it's going to require looking at our Corel videos, looking at our Photoshop videos. You know those are a lot longer. Our Corel videos are uh, five hours in length. And so in this short DVD we just haven't got time to cover everything step by step. The How to Print T-shirt book also has a great section on preparing the artwork. But the customer is going to walk in and give you uh, something like this. They're going to they're going to say this is the artwork and they're going to figure that you're just going to take this and perform miracles with this and put it on a shirt, but they really want it to have a nice hard edge and be not quite as sloppy. Can't you clean it up a little bit? And of course, it requires time to do it. There's no magic. There's no way to scan this and then push a button in computer graphics that says clean this thing up and make it work on a shirt. It may require you taking time to lay a piece of paper over the artwork, a piece of vellum paper, and actually tracing it and recreating it. There'll be many times you recreate the artwork where the customer thinks, wow, you were a magician, and you go, yeah, I spent three hours all last night working on your artwork just for your few shirts. 
The problem is going to be then how do you charge for that? Because if you spent two or three hours cleaning up the customer's art for just six shirts, you just aren't going to make any money in this business. You have to then be very hard with the customer and say you need to go to an outside artist and pay them to recreate the artwork or pay me to recreate the artwork. But in this industry, things change when the customer is now talking about 500 shirts, 1,000 shirts, lots of shirts, repeat jobs over and over and over. You'll find yourself spending a lot of hours touching up customer's artwork, making it look good so the prints look good so they'll come back and reorder shirts from you. So we're going to talk right now about how to take customer's artwork and get it prepared properly. Let's talk about computer graphics. Now we have the first issue of should you go Mac or PC, that's kind of always the thing. What hardware should I buy? If you're an artist and you've taken art classes, you've been to art school, you have art friend, artist friends, you probably want to go with a Mac because typically if you've used a platform, you like that platform. That's why Mac guys say PCs don't work, PC guys say Macs don't work, it's because they've only been exposed to one platform. I say keep with the platform you came with. You know, If you like Mac, stick with Mac. And so we don't care whether you're on a Mac or a PC. If you're a business person who's used spreadsheets, word processing, accounting programs, you probably will like a PC a lot better because you're comfortable with a PC and you're used to swapping out cards and building it up and you're used to configuring it and you understand Windows and you'll be happy with that. The realities are all of the graphic programs we're going to talk about quickly all work the same on both platforms. Corel Draw, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop all work the same on both platforms. They're identical. The buttons are the same. The menus are the same. And the customer really doesn't care which platform you use. So we don't care what you're going to use, but we do need to get computer graphics software. By the way, when you're buying your computer, you want to get the fastest computer you can get and you want to get the most RAM you can get. RAM is very inexpensive right now. What would cost a day $50 in RAM might have cost $100,000 10 years ago for RAM. RAM is the temporary memory that the computer uses to kind of store things, hold things, and work in. And the more RAM you can get, the better off you are. So get a fast computer, lots of RAM. and. In today's market, you can get a, all computers have a CD burner on them for backing up data. Some of your file sizes might get kind of big. Now, we need to talk about graphics programs. You really have three basic programs in this industry. You've got two of them that are called vector programs. Vector programs like a cartoon kind of a look. They like a hard edge graphic. It's all math to the computer. It knows from the math from point A to point B to point C. It knows the curve. It knows the edge. It knows how thick the line is. And so vector programs are typically Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator. If you're a Mac user, you probably will go with Adobe Illustrator because that's the program of choice on the Mac side. If you're a PC user, you're probably going to go with Corel Draw. That seems to be the program of choice on the PC side. They both do the same thing. They both allow you to scan an image in, bring it up, convert the image from little pixels that the scanner sees into vectors, into the actual math of the image, bring it into the program, add gradations, add type, and output films are output what's called color separations. And so vector programs are something you need. They're your bread and butter programs. Every day, every day you're going to be using a vector program. You're going to bring an image up, add type, fill it with color, output films. Bring up an image, add type, output films. And so you want to look at either Corel or Adobe Illustrator. Now, this is a one color print. And if you're doing a multicolor design, you're going to need film, or paper, or vellum, or acetate, whatever it takes to burn a screen, one for each color. Now, when you're working in computer graphic programs, you're looking at the monitor and the image is in color, and you're thinking, well, I need color output. No, you're a screen printer now, and you need to burn a screen from a black and white image, and then you're going to put the right color of ink in the screen at the press. You're going to take this and burn a screen, take this and burn a screen, you're going to go to the press, line these up, which we're going to show you later, and put the correct color of ink. In this case, it might be brown ink for the squeegee handle, it might be black ink for the outside line called the key line oftentimes and that's what we need is we need call we need what's called color separations all of these programs will do either simple one color or multicolor color separations. Now, I mentioned you need three programs. The third program is a program called Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop is a pixel-based program that is going to be kind of on your wish list if you're starting off. At the beginning, you do need Corel or Illustrator. You need one or the other. And don't let anybody talk you into anything else other than those one of those two programs. Don't let people talk you into buying a little $50 consumer program, because typically those programs will create the image, but they will not do separations. And we have to keep our focus. We we need the way to, a way to output the image, either as a one color or as a multicolor design, and have it separated if it's multicolor. But Photoshop is more high end. Photoshop likes photorealistic images. So if your design is a photograph with lots of colors and shading and gradations, Photoshop is the program of choice. Obviously, this DVD does not cover how to use Photoshop. I'm going to show it to you very briefly. We have a complete five-hour training DVD on Photoshop that teaches you how to use the program in depth. I'm just trying to empower you to know what you need to buy. You need to buy either Corel or Illustrator, and you need to buy Photoshop.